Hello guys, I welcome all of you to today's farmcast. And today again I'll be discussing five different drugs of choice. And at last I'll discuss one of your concerns that is related to revision. Right? So let us start with begin with our first disorder for today. Right guys, so tell me what is the drug of choice for Bartonella? Think. See for Bartonella if they ask you single drug of choice, your answer would be doxycycline. But remember for Bartonella we use a regimen where we combine doxycycline with gentamicin right now in case in case you cannot give gentamicin for some reason for example uh, the patient is having renal failure or autotoxicity then in that case i can substitute gentamicin with rifampicin which means what the treatment of choice for bartonella is doxycycline plus gentamicin or rifampicin right guys now let us move move on Tell me guys, what is the drug of choice for Bell's palsy? I'll give you two options. You have to choose from. Bell's palsy. Is the drug of choice prednisolone or is the drug of choice velacyclovir? Now think, think of an answer. Think of an answer in your brain and then I'll tell you the right answer. See, Bell's palsy guys, remember the drug of choice are steroids because the improvement with steroids is very dramatic as compared to antiviral drug. In fact, there are conflicting reviews about the use of antiviral drugs in Bell's palsy. Nevertheless, I'll tell you regarding the use of antiviral drugs as well. So guys, remember prednisolone is always used in Bell's palsy, whereas velacyclovir is added to prednisolone in case you are dealing with a severe case of facial palsy. If it is a severe case of facial palsy, you can add on velacyclovir. But remember the main drug here is prednisolone. Let us move on to third uh, condition today guys it is uh, benzodiazepine toxicity it has is very commonly asked guys benzodiazepine toxicity what is the drug of choice now guys I think even I don't need to ask this because 100% of you would know the answer it is flumazenil so flumazenil is the drug of choice for benzodiazepine toxicity and obviously you know it is a benzodiazepine antagonist now guys remember flumazenil is most active against benzodiazepine it is somewhat active against the Z compounds like Zolpidem, Zopiclone, Azopiclone. Even against those drugs, you can use Flomazenil, but it is not as active as it is against Benzodiazepine. But the last point here is Flomazenil has no activity against barbiturates. Yes, because the site of action of barbiturate is very far away. It is very different from the sites for Benzodiazepine and the Z compounds. Moving on to the fourth disorder for today, guys, it is belladonna poisoning. So belladonna poisoning, guys, remember what is belladonna? Belladonna is nothing but it is atropine, atropine, right? And for belladonna poisoning, the answer would be the drug of choice for atropine poisoning. That is physostigmine. We discussed in the last podcast that physostigmine is the drug of choice for atropine poisoning. It is a drug of choice for belladonna poisoning. And it is also the drug of choice for datura poisoning and guys the last disorder for today is nothing but it is beta blocker toxicity guys think beta blocker toxicity what is the drug of choice so guys remember single drug of choice is glucagon right glucagon is the drug of choice now some students they ask me how glucagon is effective in beta blocker toxicity i mean what is the reason see guys beta blocker by blocking beta 1 receptors in the heart that decrease cyclic AMP and glucagon is a source for cyclic AMP that is how it can compensate for the deficiency of cyclic AMP nevertheless here I'll, I'd like to tell you some other points see we do not stop at glucagon we need to use some other drugs for symptomatic management for example uh, for treatment of bradycardia that can be caused by beta blocker what do you think I should use as here I, should, I would be using atropine second hypotension with beta blocker what do you think we should use as hypotension with beta blocker will be using epinephrine epinephrine right and for example if there is hyperglycemia that can be seen i can use insulin so insulin epinephrine atropine these are also used in management of beta blocker toxicity so guys now we have uh, reached to the last part of our farmcast and today what i've taken is a concern right for your preparation that is uh, when should I begin revision? Now this is something I get frequently as a doubt, sir, when should I begin revision? See guys, um, usually if you, if you ask me, it's my point of view that minimum, 
minimum three months revision is required means 90 days and uh, you might think 90 days is too much for revision guys it will fly like anything you won't even know before 90 days is over right so even 90 days can be inadequate there are students who revise for four months five months but obviously they have started pretty much earlier during their ug period and they have much more time so if you have four months it is good five months it is more than enough but minimum right i'm i'm uh, i'm telling this for those students who are scratching scratching to get at least some time for revision so guys a minimum 30 30 days is required and uh, remember i tell this time and again not having an adequate revision is as good as not preparing guys right and uh, then those 90 days or 120 days how you divide it is completely up to you but usually it is divided into three parts a mega revision then a mini revision then a micro revision right if i have 90 days i'll divide into 50 days of a bigger revision then uh, 30 days of a mini revision and then 10 days of a micro revision where i will quickly flip through my pages and all and then i'll try to finish off my course so three revisions minimum three revisions minimum 90 days it should be the mantra guys if you have more days you are most welcome for revision so that's all guys for today and take care. Bye-bye. This was Dr. Ranjan with you.